हेलो एम एडेबल सर श्रीनिवास जी सर यू आर एडेबल ओ थैंक यू यस सर यू आर एडेबल या 
Yeah, hi, Dr. Ramchandra. How are you? So, very good evening, sir. Shall we start our... Am, am I already booked? Kishore, Kishore Kumar Garu, have you joined? I guess you are joined. Yes, yes, yes. Can you... Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I am. I am yeah. hearing you. Okay, then. Good, good. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, shall we start? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Sunil Kumar. Sir. Sunil. Shall we start the meeting? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, can you play a college song once? Then we will start. Sir, already initiated, sir. Then you can start now, sir. Actually, streaming is in progress. Sir, please start the session, sir. Streaming already in progress, sir. Yes. Principal, sir, has joined or not? Not yet, sir. Sir, joined in the meanwhile, sir. Okay. So, greetings to all the participants. Hearty welcome to the e-conference on recent research trends in science and technology. And today is a great day, as you know all. And uh, today is a National Technology Day. And on behalf of the Department of Physics and Government College Autonomous Rajamandri, greetings to you all, so our scientists and innovators on this National Science Day. Uh, way back in 1998, the India has shown to the world and demonstrated its stellar achievement to the world, and uh, uh, that is the Procron test, and then uh, we remember with a pride the moment and all the scientists and the citizens of India, they are celebrating and remembering the great day of the Indian's National Technology Day. So on account of this, the Department of Physics uh, has come with a conference with a great scientist. Uh, one is Dr. Kishore Kumar Sadasivani. And he's from Qatar University. He's working on uh, energy materials sensors. And the second speaker, S.D. Srinivas Garu, is a, a scientific student uh, community uh, head and founder president. And he's from Andhra Pradesh. And third one is Professor Chetan Singh Solanki. He's from uh, energy, um, energy, uh, energy sciences of IA, IIT Mumbai, and he is a great scientist, and he is the innovator of solar bus. Okay, we are going to listen to him today, and it is a great opportunity to meet you all through this online conference, and uh, it's my privilege to start the meeting with the first session. Uh, with Dr. Kishore Kumar Sadasivani. And let me introduce him. So Dr. Kishore Kumar Sadasivani is currently working research assistant professor and the group leader of Smart Nano Solutions at Center for Advanced Materials, Qatar University. Dr. Kishore's research has its roots from the analytical chemistry and he masters during his master's degree in Andhra University, India. He received his PhD in material science and engineering from University of South Brittany at Laureate, France in 2012 under the supervision of the Professor Yos Gronis and Professor 
Subhu Thomas. He has, to his credit, a vast experience of postdoctoral research as he has been to his position, firstly to the Anha University at South Korea, Professor Johan Kim, supervisor, 2014, and then two times at Qatar University, Professor Mariam Al Madid, 2015, and Dr. John John Kebibihan, 2017. He was appointed to the Center for Advanced Material at Qatar University in 2018 as a research associate, from which he has been promoted to his present designation as research assistant professor in June 2021. He has been included in the world's top 2% scientists according to a list compiled by Stanford University in the year 2019. And for this, he was recently honored by the Qatar University. He was enormous knowledge and valuable experience in the field owing to over 12 years of active research experience uh, Dr. Kishore has more than 250 research articles published in international peer-reviewed journal with a total citations of 4,850 and H index is 37. He's uh, also the author of 20 book chapters and the editor of eight books. His books were included in Springer top 25 ebook downloaded of the year 2020. Some of Dr. Kishore Kumar inventions are protected by two US patents and two Indian patents, and presently five patent disclosures have been submitted by him. He is a group leader and is a presently lead principal in investigator for 11 research projects covering the NPRP, UREP, IRCC grants of Qatar National Research Fund and the Qatar University. He is also involved in other three research grants as the principal investigator summarizing a total grant of $3 million. Dr. Kishore is a team player and has collaborated actively with researchers, more than 450 co-authors as evident from the Scopus data. In several disciplines of computers, uh, computer science, biomedical sciences, industrial engineering, and electrical engineering from all over the world, USA, France, South Korea, Oman, Spain, Italy, Australia, Malaysia. Dr. Kishore Kumar's achievements have been recognized by several awards, such as Tile and Rubber Industry Leadership Acknowledgement Awards, Trilla, Young Researcher Award of the Year 2017. With this brief prior data, I proudly introduce Dr. Kishore Kumar, and on this National uh, Technology Day, we would like to uh, invite you for uh, for your uh, valuable to, uh, to give a valuable talk to our students and the audience on this day. So, Dr. Kishore Kumar Garu, heartily welcome to you, sir. And uh, you are the motivation for all the youngsters. You received many awards, and then uh, here we are here eagerly hearing from you, sir. Thank you. So, over to Kishore Kumar Garu. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramchandra, for your kind introduction and uh, and thanks for inviting me uh, to share my research work. Um, uh, firstly, uh, happy National Technology Day. Uh, in fact, I didn't know this day existed <laughs> after you invited me. Then, then only I, I understood, okay, today is a National Technology Day. So, and uh, good evening to all um, and good afternoon here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so today, uh, I would like to discuss uh, my research work related to sensors, uh, how it works in daily life. So what will happen, uh, I mean, if it dis disappears suddenly, okay? Uh, can I get a privilege to share my screen? Yeah, you, you, can, you can share your screen. Uh, but the host has to be moved, the cursor. Can, can you? Yeah. Uh, may I ask help? Oh, Dr. Sunil? Yes. yes, now I could. Now I could. Sunil, can you guide him? Yes, I, 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 I did. I did it. Yeah. We'll go with that. Yes. Yeah, we are, we are seeing you, sir. Your slides. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Let me just move the cursor down a little. Okay. 
Yeah, it's moving now. Yeah. The cursor, right? So before uh, discussing my research work, I just would like to give some brief introduction about uh, Qatar University. Um, so Qatar University is located at Qatar, and uh, this is the most uh, and richest country in the the worldwide. You know because they import uh, or export even oil and gases. And the population here around 2.5 uh, million, and in that 1.5 million are Indians. So if you go any shop, you can just speak Hindi. That's fine. So uh, it's it's easy easy to communicate with the people here. Okay, and you can find all the uh, malls, you know, um, even Indian items, food. You just feel like you are in India only. I never feel like that I was in a different country, you know. Uh, but it's really friendly people here. And I was moved uh, to Qatar in 2013 after my PhD. Uh, and I was uh, worked as a postdoc, as Dr. Ramchandra explained. Uh, and um, the travel time from India to here is just for four and a half hours. So you can just uh, take a nap and then you can be land here. It's very easy um, uh, to travel also. That's why I choose the country, you know, and mostly in, in here to us also. And um, here is some of the glimpse photos. Uh, um, you can see the first photo is, is the Qatar National uh, uh, Museum. And I have been visited a couple of times, and I found that there are some of uh, um, items related to India, especially some, um, you know, the war weapons. And and it's 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 happy to see that you know <laughs> that we are belongs to India, and then the, some of the Indian items are there. Um, and also, you can see that uh, Cornish Beach, um, also city center there, and also there are many stadiums are constructing now, and. Um, for the FIFA uh, World Cup 2022. So maybe I just would like to take an opportunity to welcome you all to visit Qatar next year. Hopefully uh, the pandemic will go off uh, and everything will be easy to travel. So you can stay in my home also and we can watch together the football cup. Okay. So going to the um, activities at Qatar University, so we have uh, different departments, as I mentioned in these slides, we have arts and science, engineering, education and business, medicine, dental, pharmacy. So we always work together with all the disciplines. So for example, in my case, I work with uh, mostly engineering. You know, and also I work with uh, biomedical department, even uh, I work with um, a business school also while making some um, spin-off companies. So um, this is a very good environment to enhance ourselves also. So apart from the departments, we have also research centers that particularly work on uh, specific themes. Uh, and this is a difference is uh, only the, the teaching. So in the research centers who are working, so generally they won't teach, just do research only. But in another case, they should teach and do research also. So here you can see that there are uh, the centers um, indicated here um, uh, under VPS RGC, means um, Vice President of Research and Graduate Studies. So Center for Advanced Material is there. So that is our center where we are working and developing uh, different new materials. So, so this is the group uh, photo of um, Center for Advanced Materials. Um, and uh, in that group, we are working on sensors, especially from my side. Uh, other than that, uh, other groups such as for batteries, corrosion, energy conversion, storage, building construction, solars, whatnot. I mean, wherever the material involves, we will work on that one. So, in the Center for Advanced Materials, so my group, which is called uh, Smart Nano Solutions, uh, 
here you can see uh, that uh, Dr. Kartik is there and Dr. Um, Munira is also there and um, other fellows, research assistants also are working with me. So we mainly focus to work on sensors and uh, actuators, also energy storage device. Um, and especially we fabricate these you know, um, devices based on the 3D printing. So I will give a little brief introduction also. So in my group is fully focused on fabrication of the sensors, especially gas sensors, biomedical sensors, security based sensors, um, environmental sensors. Uh, also, we, we focus to fabricate um, and also we worked on the piezoelectrics. So I will give some more idea about what piezoelectric in my next slides. Also actuators. Um, and also we work on the flexible electronics. Um, especially we are working on flexible electronics to, uh, to by using the biopolymers as a substrate to in order to avoid the electronic waste. For example, you can see that uh, large quantities of electronic waste are, uh, you know, uh, can see everywhere in the garbages. So, but if we are making um, electronics based on these biopolymers, it could be very uh, helpful for the society and can control the, um, the electronic waste also. Uh, and also we worked on the dielectric materials uh, using the polymer composites such as CNTs, I mean, carbon nanotube, graphene or MXCs. So we, we worked on also most of the, the nanomaterials. So I just gave you some highlights of materials which we are using. So these dielectrics uh, mainly focused to fabricate the capacitors based on the composites. So it is also flexible materials that you can use it. And finally, uh, we work on the technique uh, additive manufacturing, 3D printing uh, to fabricate all these above mentioned uh, electronics uh, to make it faster um, and precise. So my talk outline contains introduction of the sensor so that I will give some about the sensors in our daily life uses. I will give some idea of biomarkers. And also I will discuss about 3D printing, how we can make the gas sensors based on the 3D printing. Later I will discuss the uh, strain sensors uh, and how we fabricated um, uh, by using the electronic waste materials from the Qatar Aluminum Company. Uh, and also from municipal waste also we take and then we fabricate uh, for the sensors. It's nothing but taking a waste material, um, making it valuable products. And, and if you see that all my research work mainly focused on solving the problem. So first of all, we will find a problem Okay, for example, industry. So they used to approach us and they will give some problem like, um, you know, gas leakage or waste materials. So when they comes with a, a new problem, we will try to solve it, okay, by using our technologies. So, um, as I said, uh, I will give uh, an idea about seven concepts. You know, you can see that these seven concepts, I, I, I will give you an idea, okay. In that each concept, I will give a, a little story, okay. Then you will understand why we have been worked on the problem. So we using sensors in all our daily life, right? Example, in your phone, or in your car, or in your building, everywhere you are using. So what if suddenly disappear? This is first my question. So imagine that, okay, all your sensors disappear. So what will happen? So in my point of view, the life won't stop, but you will lose the comfort, okay? For example, so what will happen if the fire sensor, I mean, that's a gas sensor, it detects the carbon monoxide, it disappears simply, okay, from your buildings. So if any fire accident happen, so it cannot detect, okay, so what it will happen after detecting this fire, so it on, on the sprinkle, water sprinkles and control the temperature inside. And also it gives the information to the fire safety, okay, people through internet of things. 
So imagine if it doesn't happen, means if there is no some censorship there, it won't happen, means right? So you will lose the life and you will lose the property. So this is very important topic of sensors in our daily life. For example, um, even in the car, okay? If some accident happened, the suddenly the, um, uh, the um, uh, sensor will work, okay? And it will prevent a lot of damage. This is how the sensors work inside the car. So what really sensor? Sensor is a device, a module, a machine, or a subsystem whose purpose is to detect events or change the environment and send the information to the electronic frequently to the computer. For example, uh, most of the time we use the sensor to connect with the IoT, Internet of Things, uh, and we connect with the Arduino, okay, the raspberries. So what will happen after connecting, such as pressure, position, temperature, or acceleration, uh, and respond with the feedback? Currently, all the industries are moving towards the automation. You know that um, uh, to reduce the manpower, so they are using the automation. For example, uh, making a car. And previously, like 100 people are used to make a car. But now automation comes, so just 10 people enough. So for all these automations, we require the sensors. So coming to the first point is biomarkers. So before I explain you some background behind why we are doing this research, I hope everyone knows about what is diabetics. Okay, this is a genetic device, I mean, disease. Most of the people are, I mean, around like uh, one person in, in most of the people are, I mean, around like uh, one person in, in 11 we have. So, uh, some people are telling it's because of heritage or, or maybe because of habits, you know. Uh, so, so diabetes is a disease that occurs when your blood glucose increases. Okay. In general, how the doctor will determine this blood glucose uh, content in your blood by just pricking on your finger is by using the chemical method. So in order to check the doses to you, for example, 100 mg or 50 mg, okay, 10 mg. So there are uh, medicine that he has to prescribe to you. So how he has to prescribe is by checking the glucose content he used to be, okay. So whenever you go to the doctor and he will prick it. So to avoid this method, method, generally we call this method is uh, invasive method, means by putting on your finger or, or body. So we quite this method, we invent a new de device or technique, okay, to find it from your breath. So there are uh, uh, different techniques is just taking the breath, okay, and then analysis. This is one of the technique. And also there are other techniques like x-ray or even uh, blood pressure, you know, deep palpation. All these are the non-invasive techniques, but we choose the breath, the this method to determine the glucose level. So we are introducing um, a new non-invasive technique, breath analysis concept to test the presence of acetone, uh, which is nothing but glucose. So in generally what will happen that when the glucose level increase in your body and it also produce the acetone in your breath. So it is a direct relation. So if you have more acetone content on your breath means you have a higher amount of glucose. So the proposed method is very low cost method, we believe, uh, because the, we calculated the, the device cost is around like, like 10 rupees even, okay? So whenever you need just, so based on the color change, you can find whether you have enough glucose level in the body or not, okay? So it is a, uh, a very helpful technique to make it very fast also. You can detect within seconds also. And uh, low cost and simple. And also you can connect this device to the IOTC, which means you can just blow it and it connect to your mobile. And the mobile will signal will send to doctor. So doctor can see all your data. And then he can prescribe you. So what are the biomarkers inside our body? Okay. 
So you can see here, I have uh, given some list of the biomarkers in, in our breath. For example, if acetone is there, means you have high amount of glucose in the blood. Or if you have nitric oxide, it means you have some problem with the lung disease. Or you have the isoprene, ethane, so ammonia. So depends on the amount of the gas inside your breath, we can easily detect that what kind of problem you are facing. Okay. So as I gave the numbers before, uh, um, diabetes is the, the world fastest growing chronic disease. So one person in 11 now, okay, in the world right, and it will increase 10 in 2040. So currently 415 million people are suffering with this disease. And even it, it affects children also. Uh, it's around like 0.5 million. So, so how we made a solution, as I informed before, so we made a <clears throat> solution. The solution name I cannot explain you and or, or I cannot reveal that one because it is under patenting, okay? But just imagine the solution is just a dye, okay? A simple dye that can change the color after you blowing. So I just give here the idea about how the relation between acetone and blood glucose. You can see that it's a linear range. So if you have acetone level higher, so blood glucose level also, you can predict it easily. And you can see the mechanism in the down part um, where you can, the body can produce acetone by fat burning. So you, here you can see a video. Now I can play for you if this video. Yeah. So in this video, you can see a person who is testing the, um, the glucose level. And we have checked the prototype efficiency also by comparing a commercially available device. And we found that there is an excellent correlation between the commercially device and the device which we have been fabricated. The commercially available device, the cost is around $250, okay? The one we have been fabricated is not even $0.5. So very cheaper one and highly accurate. The accuracy of our device is 99.9%. And you can see that in the video, the color is changed, you know, the person who has diabetics. And also I have been shown here the color, how the color change happened from uh, pale pink to the green. And by the intent, okay, for example, you have, you have higher amount of acetone, the color of intensity will be very high, which means you have to take in high water in the plants. So we, for that, we, we use the hydrogel inside the sensor. So what is hydrogel? Hydrogel is a, a network of cross-linked polymer chains that are hydrophilic, sometimes found as a colloid gel in which water is the dispersion medium. A three-dimensional solid result from the hydrophilic polymer chain being held together by cross-links. So in general, what will happen that, so when water comes contact with the hydrogel, it just expands, okay? And when it moves the water and contracts. So we use this mechanism to trigger the sensor. So for example, you keep these sensors inside the tree. So whenever it requires the water, it triggers the sensor and automatically it will give an information to the IoT system to own the motor. So as the hydrogel which we have been used also, it is biopolymer. So it's eco-friendly biopolymer. So it's eco-friendly material that you can also use in this making the sensor. So what is the mechanism involved? So mechanism is simply as shown in the animation. So what will happen that when liquid comes in contact with the sensor, so water molecule enter inside the three dimension network, it just gets expanded. So when water goes off, so it will be contract. 
So we use two ITO glasses and we keep a hydrogel inside. Okay. So when it gets expanded, what will happen? It it touches the ITO uh, ITO glasses. So so what will happen? It passes the electricity, and it triggers the IoT device. And when it is no water, it just contract means it it stop the electricity between two electrodes. So we use very simple idea to control the device. Yeah. So here um, we also compare this sensor, the fabricated sensor, with the commercially available one. You can see that uh, in the left side, the commercially one and right side, which we have been fabricated. So commercially one, the price is around uh, 150 rupees. The one which we have been prepared may be below 10 rupees even, okay? The only cost is higher is ITO glass, or you can use any electrodes also. So the main advantage of the current development of sensor is utilizing a dual purpose. So it will act as a reservoir, Okay, because uh, whenever it, it just, just absorb the water, it can preserve the water whenever necessary. The plant requires, so it will give also. Otherwise, it will just keep as such. So it will be highly selective towards the water only. But the commercial one is not for water. It will detect other liquids also. And another advantage is depth. You can keep the fabricated sensor in the depth more than uh, 37 millimeter, but the commercial one is just on the surface of the earth. So the working temperature of the commercial one is 10 to 30 degrees, but the one hour is higher. You can go more than even 50 degrees also. And um, commercially available provides less accuracy in, in sand soils due to large particles and required to calibrate for each soil type. But our, you can use any type of soil also. So this is the prototype, how it works. You can see that um, for demo purpose, we keep the sensor outside and we heat with the hot gun. So when it gets off, you know, there is no water inside the sensor, it triggers the motor. So what automatically we are doing is, first of all, we are controlling the usage of water, also controlling the manpower, right? Because when we made this as a automation, so you do not need a, a manpower for doing this one. So it's an automatic process. So we can save water and also money at the same time. Yeah, I will move a little faster. So because it takes a bit more time to dry it, okay. You can see that the water start coming when it gets dried. Okay, so we finished two research parts and this is the third uh, part that is capacitive sensors. So we have been fabricated uh, capacitive sensors based on uh, cellulose nanocrystals because nanocrystals are very um, transparent materials and it can absorb a lot of energy and it can preserve the capacitance. So before going to explain this capacitive sensor, I just want to give some background about this research work. Uh, you might all aware of the fingerprint scanner, which is used all over the world in banking services and security or in attendance purpose, everywhere, everywhere we are using this one. So there are some people who are scamming this device, okay? They're spoofing the device. So how they do the spoofing is, so they will, take the fingerprint of your finger by using the polymer substrate. They will just coat the polymer on the surface and they can take the fingerprint and they can pass instead of you. 
so which is happening i mean they can do robbery also or they can simply cut the finger okay and <laughs> they can steal the money also so what we have been um, come up with a new idea to check the liveliness so we use the capacitive sensor and we embedded inside the all the fingerprint scanner so it will detect first the capacitance of your body it means you are alive alive okay so if you make a dummy finger you, it, it won't work because there is no capacitance for the dummy finger or if you cut the finger there won't be any capacitance so the system won't start itself so we use the capacitive sensor to operate the fingerprint scanner so i will show you how it works so here is is the sensor how we have been developed um we take some clean glass okay that is a ito glass and then we spray the uh, cellulose nano crystals and then we connect it to the device so the conductive glass we coated with this nano crystals and then uh, connected to the system alternatively and we made this product as a patent so you can see that how it will work yeah let me play this for you yeah no yeah so this is the real finger yes so it it works so the next one is dummy finger you can see the dummy finger also working to avoid that dummy finger we use the capacitance sensor see it's first checking your capacitance okay the liveliness it detects you yes so we tried the dummy finger you can see the dummy finger it don't have any capacitance so here is the demonstration of video as shown in the video we have been made a dummy finger with a real fingerprint and you can observe that it's working with the both dummy and real finger the system not able to recognize the fake finger so in order to recognize the liveliness of the finger we have used the capacitive sensor and it detects the liveliness before checking the fingerprint okay so coming to the next research work what we have been used is strain sensor so in this research topic we have been fabricated strain sensor from the waste material so there are two waste material we found from qatar especially from qatar aluminum company so in that company they produce aluminum also they produce the carbon black so carbon black is a conductive filler so they don't know what to do with this carbon black you know they cannot dump in water or not cannot be in landfill so they approach us to use that carbon black also and the same simultaneously we know that uh, plastic is another waste material okay mm, uh, polyethylene so we mix both of this carbon black and uh, plastic together and we made a sensor so from a waste material and we made a precious material so here is how we have been fabricated so we took the plastic waste and we mix with the carbon black using the brabender mixer so why did we choose this brabender mixer is to avoid any solvent uses for example you can also use some solvents like toluin to mix this uh, carbon black and plastic waste but it is not an eco friendly way to mix it but we use the brabender you know it's a melt extrusion technique and then it will melt the first plastic and then mix with the carbon black and you can see that final product is a strain sensor or it's a pressure sensor also can be used so here is the main criteria for fabrication of the sensor so you may think that simply mixing this polymer and carbon black you can make um, 
a composite, but not a sensor. So before making the sensor, one should learn about the percolation limit and means at which amount of filler concentration need to be add for the polymer. In general, what will happen that when we increase the filler content, the conductivity will be increased. This is the usual process, right? So when you increasing the conductivity, it reaches semiconductor first, okay? Because polymer itself a insulator. When you add this filler, conductive filler, it moves to the semiconductor property. And then it will go to the conductor level. So for making the sensors, we have to understand at which weight percentage we need to make the sensor. So in our case, we use the 50 percentage of carbon black because it's a micro particle. That's why we use the higher amount. If we're using a nano dimension particle, it might be less than maybe two weight percentage. But in our case, we used 50 percentage um, to get the semiconductor. At that level, we got very good sensitivity. So when we are applying the strain, it shows very good sensitivity as shown in this figure. So what we understand the sensitivity behavior of samples switching at junctions due to the polymer foils and carbon black particles. Okay, so it will be break and then coming back, break and coming back. So sensor here demonstrate have good sensitivity um, evidence by applying 15 newtons of the force. Uh, even we tried below 15 newtons, but unfortunately we couldn't get uh, higher sensitivity below 15 newtons. But um, uh, we got very good sensitivity above 15 newtons. So from this graph, we can also understand that the durability of the sensor means you can use the sensor many times. So for example, this sensor you can keep under the bridge, okay, to, to check the loading of the bridge. For example, if excess amount of uh, weight happen on the bridge, it might collapse, right? It happened to many, many cases also. So these sensors you can keep under the bridge and you can control the forces. For example, um, we have been demonstrated also, uh, we kept these sensors under the bridge and we find the weight on, on the bridge. For example, 10 cars, okay? After 10 cars moving on the bridge, so we fix a gate at the initial point. So once it reaches the maximum level of, uh, you know, that capacity of the bridge, so it stopped the gate, okay? So after this 10, 10 cars move, it again open and next cars will come through that point. So it means you can control the traffic on the bridge also. So imagine that from a waste material, we are making this one. So moving to the 3D printing sensors. Um, so in this particular topic, we have been used uh, additive manufacturing. So the 3D printing is an additive manufacturing technique that you can prepare the sensors, maybe thousand at one shot within a hour even. But if it is like a manual process, uh, it will take long time, I mean, molding technique. But by using the 3D printing, you can really adjust the dimensions and also you can adjust the sensitivity levels by using the 3D printing. The only problem what we have been faced with this 3D printing is um, cost. So it will be more cost than uh, um, molding technique. If we produce a lot, you know, lot of number of uh, sensors, we can also control that uh, cost also at the same time. So what is 3D printing? 3D printing uh, or additive manufacturing is a process making three-dimensional solid objects from a digital file. Here is the 3D printer which we have been used. Uh, this is called uh, uh, digital light processing, which means uh, so we use the photopolymer, okay, as you can see here. Uh, so polymer will be kept inside this tank and then um, a photo light will be fall under that one. So, so whenever you use this uh, design, so it keep on give the light from the downstairs 
you know, and then it will be curated layer by layer type. So not only this technique, we have also other uh, 3D printing techniques such as stereolithography and selective laser centering, fused deposition modeling also, and uh, multi-jet fusion. Even different, different type of uh, exist, but we are using for our convenience this, this um, technique. Also, we are using this um, polymer extrusion method also. Uh, the application, what we have been uh, made from this 3D printer is, we have also made some mask, okay? At the time of uh, uh, pandemic, we designed some new kind of mask that can prevent much better than uh, a commercially available one. Uh, also, we implemented some biomedical sensors also and uh, prototypes, you know? While making prototype, we need some boxes. So we can make also using the 3D printer. <laughs> so, uh, I, I as I mentioned that, so we could make, you know, the electronic parts by using 3D printer, but there is some problem while handling this 3D printer. First problem what we have been faced is the tank size. So the commercially available one, the 3D printer, they will give a tank size like a, like a one liter, okay? But in our case, we use some nanomaterials also and mix with the polymer and then we print it for getting the better conductivity and results. So while you're using the nanomaterials, so the quantity of nanomaterial which you can synthesize in our lab is very less. So it means you need to control the tank size. So then only you can print it. For example, if it's like a one liter, so we need to make it like a, like a one kg of uh, nanomaterial, which is impossible to make it in a laboratory scale. So for that, we make our own homemade customized 3D printer also, the design. And also while making the composites printing, we have to understand that when you add the nanomaterial, for example, in our case, we use CNT. So it will become very dark solution. In the case of DLP, I mean, dynamic uh, light processing, you need to make the solution is very clear. So then only the light can pass through the solution. So when you add the CNT, it becomes very dark and it cannot pass. It means it cannot print. So this is the one of the problem which also we found so what we did is we added CNT with a limited quantity. So that is one of the problem we have been faced while printing the materials. So you can see that uh, that new tank which we have been prepared, um, which is a very small tank we have been adjusted and they can fabricate like even two gram of the composite that's enough to prepare the sensors. Here is the sensors which we have been prepared. And um, uh, up, up and down are the electrodes and the middle lines are the sensing elements. So when we pass through the gas, so it will detect the gas and, and give a sensitivity result of resistance change. So the, as I mentioned before, the composition, what we have been used is 0.28 percentage of conductive filler and 0.258 percentage of sensing materials we used. And the photopolymer, uh, which can be cured at 395 nanometer uh, wavelength. So from the graph, what we understand that um, the 3D printer sensor have very good um, durability. I mean, you can use many times but the only problem what we found is the, the sensitivity limit is very bad, which means uh, we use for CO2 sensing, which is like 100 ppm level, only we can detect. Below that, the sensor cannot detect even. But if you make the same sensor by using manually, just by spray coating techniques, you can get even below one ppm detection also. So this is the one of the major problem currently we are facing to control the sensitivity. And second problem, what we also found from the 3D printing, 
when 3D print the composite, it lack of interaction between the layer layer. You know? So how the 3D printing can, can work first layer, okay? And then gap, second layer, third layer. So it's a layer by layer structured building, right? So what will happen when you are making layer by layer, there is a lack of interaction between the layer by layers. That's why uh, if you make a material by using 3D printer, it, will, it won't be a, such a strong enough. So to avoid this um, problem, what we use that, we use the CNT filler, okay? And we 3D print it and we kept in a microwave oven. As all of you know that CNT can absorb the microwave radiation higher and it generates the heat. Because of heat, what will happen? So it will be melt and then give a strong bonding between the layer by layer. And ultimately we will get a, a strong conductivity also. Also, we fabricated some piezoelectric materials, um, which is nothing but when you give some mechanical uh, force, so it converts into the electrical energy. So using this 3D printing technique, we mix with the zinc oxide and photopolymer. Zinc oxide is, is a piezoelectric material. We mixed with the photopolymer and we made a, a shoe. Of course, this is not the same shoe which we have been fabricated, but it it seems similar to that one, and we can generate the energy around 8 volt. So here you can see that um, the, the fabricated piezoelectric device using the 3D printing technology, we found that uh, zinc oxide was dispersed very well from the SCM image, we can see that, um, and it is well organized throughout the composite also. Uh, the mechanical strength of the sample also shows very good uh, but not as much as the compression molding technique. As, as I said, so because of this lack of interaction, it is a little, little weaker than the compression mold technique also. We also checked the performance of the device uh, and we found it's around eight volts getting from peak to peak. And this, uh, we found that the resonance frequency um, because lack of time, I cannot explain much about this um, topic. Um, but if if someone want to uh, know much about this um, device design, I can they can contact me di directly. So, <clears throat> so here is my conclusion about the work. Um, so we have been made a groundbreaking breadth analysis portable device um, has been fabricated with a painless and precise drug delivery by using the biomarkers and successfully fabricated a biodegradable uh, capacitive sensor used for biometric scanner in order to stop the spoofing. And also we fabricated the, the strain sensors um, has been designed um, using the carbon black wastage material, uh, also plastic waste. Um, and the product is uh, finally got with a zero. Um, cost. In fact, because we are taking the waste material, and if we sell this sensor, you will get you know money, so you can be profitable, and and the sensor can be also recyclable. So biodegradable uh, hydrogels were used to fabricate the sensor uh, for uh, uh, detecting the water level inside the plant, so that you can uh, uh, save the water, also save the money by avoiding the manpower. So finally, uh, also we use this 3D printing technology uh, to fabricate the sensors, even piezoelectric materials. So we believe that 3D printing will become a huge uh, disruptive technology that likes of, uh, we haven't seen since personal computer, like uh, you will use soon, like um, uh, similar to your computer, you know, you will find everywhere in your home, and you will just design and you can print it from your home itself. Uh, uh, and the only disadvantage you can find is uh, the cost. Um, if you print by commercially, I mean, the, the compression mold technique and 3D print, 3D print a bit higher cost than compared to the um, molding technique. So before leaving, I just want to give some advertisement. Um, in fact, I am the managing editor of this journal. Uh, 
this journal was uh, sponsored by the Qatar University and it was recently scopus and web of science index so i invite all the um, participants uh, to submit their manuscripts also um, and um, here is the team uh, our chief editor is um, professor alam karim and uh, associate editors are um, uh, professor mariam almadi and dr hussein yasin i am the managing editor of this journal and editorial assistant is noor bader and um, publishing editor is Nabil uh, Khalifa, and the publisher is Springer. Uh, we are expecting the impact factor hopefully the next year. Um, uh, now we are uh, trying to apply to reach uh, around three impact factor, inshallah. So finally, I just would like to uh, acknowledge the funder. Uh, Qatar National Research Funding Agency is strongly supporting us and providing the funding to hire the research assistants and postdocs. And also, I want to thank all the organizing committee, especially Dr. Ramchandra for inviting me. And it's a privilege to be here with you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, you could send me also directly by email or you can call me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kishore. Uh, it's very happy to listen to you. Yes. And uh, you spoke uh, a lot of things. Uh, that means the most interesting part of your uh, lecture is you know, how best we convert a waste material into a sensing material. We really sense your <laughs> work. So this is an awesome work, actually. So you make use of all the waste materials of industry and other things. And uh, the scarcity of water is there in Qatar. And then how can we minimize that? And then so these are the really, see, the research is, OK, one way it is elevate our career, undoubtedly. And the other way, what we do is, you know, that has to be a uh, address the problems of the society. So that's the thing. Actually, you really, you did a wonderful job and I, I feel myself uh, uh, proud uh, to have you on this uh, uh, happy occasion. And uh, the questions, whatever the questions uh, from the participants, so try to post in chat box and uh, he's uh, with us and then the next speaker is also there. And before going for next speaker, and then I would like to introduce our uh, dynamic leader and the principal of the college and uh, the president of this particular um, uh, event. So this is uh, research trends in science and technology. So um, on National uh, Technology Day to remember that, and would like to introduce our uh, principal, Dr. David Kumar Sal. So sir, uh, Sir, I hope you are there in the meeting. Sir, may I listen to you, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. So let me introduce just a few points for a few minutes, sir. So uh, to the audience, you know, so our dynamic principal, he is a motivator and a, a man of a magnet of, uh, you know, magnet means a central attraction of a government college at Anamas Razamandri. And he's uh, now currently is the discharging uh, uh, duties as a regional joint director of Zone One and Two, and also the principal of uh, NAC A Plus. So this is uh, one of the topmost college in the government sector in the entire country, and uh, who uh, scored, which scored nearly three point, uh, not nearly exactly three point three eight out of four under uh, revised accreditation framework. It is a great. Uh, uh, great um, efforts by our uh, team leader, Dr. David Kumar, sir. And uh, I can say he's a gem of mathematics and uh, he's from Central University of Hyderabad. And also his interests are, you know, teaching mathematics. And uh, you ask any government college lecturer, enter the government of Andhra Pradesh, you touch him and they are the, uh, they are the persons who take uh, training from him only. So I myself and all the other uh, teachers and lecturers who are working in all the government and private and corporate sector. And, um, and also his interests are, you know, 
um, analysis of algorithm and data structures. And uh, the main focus of his specialization is global analysis. So, you know, uh, he, he knows a vast knowledge and he has a vast knowledge and he's always trying to apply his knowledge on the college and my staff. And now he brought the college a different level of uh, uh, knowledge institution and uh, his able guidance only we recognized ourselves globally actually what we are uh, what we are seeing in our college previously it is just uh, uh, ordinary college means 2017 before the college is just uh, a normal college and after he assumed as a church it transferred a smart college now it is a digital college so you just uh, uh, press my college website and you can understand what we made and digital this everything is digitalized our timetable dynamic timetable and then e learning everything uh, youtube streaming and then you know online uh, learning system everything is there so that means if you compare this particular institution any world class institution undoubtedly so um, that is the one thing and uh, he uh, his credentials are many more and he published many papers nearly 10 papers and he received many awards from uh, from uh, research side also and uh, one of the award i would like to uh, tell you that you know um, is a american mathematical society uh, he acted as a panel member for that and also uh, many academic awards he received uh, that is american mathematical society panel member and other national board for higher higher mathematics and department of atomic, atomic energy government of india he received uh, the olympiad um, mathematics olympiad award and also ucc teacher fellowship and many more in his credit and he's a role model for all the youngsters and including me and with this a little introduction i am introducing with a proud uh, to you all to all the audience and the participants and also the speakers and uh, so i <clears throat> handing over the session just a brief remarks uh, i request you to give Uh, to the audience sir so uh, over to dr david kumar gar yeah thank you dr ram uh, you told uh, uh, you spoke much about me <laughs> so thanks a lot um i welcome all the participants um for this e international e conference on research trends in science and technology and i also wish all the participants Uh, and delegates for this uh, e conference uh, a national technology day celebration that is 11th may 2021 uh, and also um, welcoming the resource persons from qatar university dr kishore um, and dr srinivas from um, uh, scientific students uh, associate society and uh, professor chetan singh my team in mumbai uh, and all my faculty members students also attending this uh, webinar more than 300 participants are there uh, in this webinar um um uh, many more uh, uh, this kind of uh, webinars are being organized are organizing by the department of physics uh, especially under the head of the a uh, headship of uh, dr ramchandar uh, who is our scientist in our institution uh, from nano that's why i'll call him as nano scientist all the time uh, and also he is guiding the students um, on various aspects of uh, towards uh, uh, bringing uh, the students towards a, a tempo on research activity uh, i really congratulate him for organizing this webinar um this institution is a premier institution in the country now is a world institution more than 170 years is 170 years old the britishers ruled the first principal is the britisher and now i am the 71st principal uh in during these 170 years 170 years i am the my number is 71 so 
um it's a great honor and it's a great privilege uh, to guide my teachers and students and this institution is offering um various diversified courses programs uh, both uc and pg under radiation and post radiation and research and we are also having more than 40 research scholars at present 40 research scholars are pursuing for the phd and at the same time uh, nearly 25 20 20 supervisors phd supervisors also there uh, and at the same time our students are actively participate in many startups and uh, now and, and incubating the startups and so on and we want we'd like to come up the from this year 2021 2021 onwards um, we changed our dimension towards completely concentrating on research activity so that is why i'm always encouraging all the departments especially science departments uh, move towards research activity and involve and bring that kind of uh, tempo among the students and so that the students will opt for research because especially now in the pure sciences the research is going down the pure sciences especially physics chemistry botany geology uh, only in allied sciences only the research is moving um so that's why the, we should bring the, our main um, uh, activity and then we are guiding our all all students uh, towards moving towards the research activity so Uh, I wish you all the best and uh, thanks for giving this opportunity because the two speakers are waiting, waiting for the um, deliver their lecture on this occasion. So I congratulate the Department of Physics for uh, holding this uh, wonderful conference under um, association with the Board of Research Studies of the Government College Rajmandri and uh, Center for Innovation and Incubation right. and Entrepreneurship. so thank you very much for giving this opportunity and uh, thank you very much sir may i invite uh, um, dr basha to introduce the next speaker sd srinivas garu so basha sir are you there technical advisor uh, sunil garu can you help him once yes sir yes sir hello sir yeah good evening sir. yes yeah we are listening you yes sir sir it's my privilege to introduce uh, mr s j srinivas sir sir mr s j srinivas is an accomplished engineer turned educator with the goal of inspiring high school children in india and motivate them so that one of them can win a nobel prize in it nobel prize in science in our lifetime really a great aim sir he was awarded the best teacher award from educational special magazine and the best mentor in tana global science fair 2013 for supporting more than 1000 student groups from various schools as a thinker in childhood he used to open up observe and sometimes fix some of the electronic gadgets on his own in high school itself the habit of creating his own models and experiments continued through his engineering education at the university of pune where he assisted 100 other student groups on their projects and worked for few electronic industries with all the experience gained srinivas sir turned as entrepreneur and started a company called power sense to research design and manufacture high quality power inverters in hyderabad Apart from this, uh, he worked as an industrial consultant to a lot of companies in Andhra Pradesh and provided unique solutions to a variety of issues. His broadening interest in electronic communications led to his move abroad at the turn of the century. However, his long-term interest of educating younger generations brought him back to India from USA. He observed that even though Indian students excel in international maths and physics Olympiads. their participation is minimal and not successful in international science fairs like google or intel global science fair with the goals of increasing practical science skills and uh, nurturing scientific thoughts process he has traveled across various states of india 
uh, and to visit as many science fairs as possible. On YouTube, he shared more than 1,500 videos that he captured in these visits. To pass up his knowledge, observations to motivate students, he visited more than 500 schools to talk to nearly 3 lakh students. He has supported thousands of students over phone, email, and Facebook for the last few years whenever they had any doubt while building a working model for science fair. To popularize the hands-on learning with culture, he launched a variety of programs including Young Achievers, Young Scientist Program, and Children's Circuits Lab that are offered directly in schools throughout the academic era, throughout the academic year or as a summer camps in the holidays. He shares all the information at his disposal on a free website that has no advertisements and distractions for children at www scientificstudents.com so with these few words i welcome mr sg srinivasan sir we are ready to hear you sir yes sir good evening to all of you so i hope you all hear me i am audible to all of you i believe so yeah <laughs> so nice. yes sir yes sir you are audible okay nice uh, so, I must uh, wish you all a very happy Technology Day on this uh, 11th of May 2021. 20, uh, uh, so, yes, uh, today my session uh, right now, what I wanted to tell you all, I wanted to take you with a one question uh, because that given task relevant to the given task to me, all about renewable energies and the technologies related to that. So what I wanted to tell you, like in five to 10 minutes, I wanted to take you to a particular PPT where a single slide can make you understand more than 1,000 words. That's what I believe one thing. Second thing is after the 10 to 15 minutes of my PPT, I would like to demonstrate few of the gadgets today so that uh, uh, we will be a little different than the way the sessions are going on all across the nation. So that is what uh, I wanted to connect you some of the devices developed by me. Uh, in renewable energy area, like in uh, solar technologies and in technologies as well. So, in fact, uh, uh, I'm so happy. And this morning also, I developed a small, tiny model to make you understand little parameters about a windmill also. I mean, uh, how do we work with the energy of the wind and a lot of... Uh, so, um, all that. And after that, lastly, in, uh, in five, ten minutes, I'll be connecting you all to the wonderful resources developed using technology. Okay, so that, you know, we'll understand what about the technology and all that. So science and the technology, how they uh, go together, what is interlinked between them, what is the role of uh, engineers in between, all that uh, in expected outcome of this session as well. Okay, and uh, another most interesting thing today, after me, my guru is going to address all of you. He is none other than energy guru of me and, uh, you know, he is uh, uh, Sri uh, Chetan Singh Solanki, a professor at IIT Bombay. And uh, fortunately, we are going to have him. Uh, in fact, he's supposed to come and connect at uh, 5.30 itself because our train is running late by near about 20 minutes also. So we just sent a message to him that you can log in at uh, 5.45 also. So his time every minute is so valuable and appreciation to all of us. So I, do, uh, I request all of our audience uh, to make use of uh, my guru session much, much better because it's very rare opportunity for all of us. And he's going to talk about the kind of uh, research that all our Indians uh, may take the direction. That's another important topic for all of us. So right, right now, I'm going to share my screen so that uh, you all can go through my PPT. And in 10 minutes, I'll try to, usually I take uh, near about 60 minutes to complete it. But today, as we are running out of time, so I, sli I skip some slides. And then I'll talk, uh, stop and talk uh, uh, very important slides only. And after that, because moreover, I wanted to connect you all to my specially developed gadgets to be demonstrated where you will be enjoying much beyond, okay? Because uh, in front of my guru that I'm uh, going to show you, uh, maybe at that time while I'm, my presentation, video demonstrations are going on, my guru also might see that I really waited for all, all that time. So I'll be sharing all that in very time in next coming 15, 20 minutes also. So yeah, I'm going to share the screen now. And um, yeah, sharing my screen. Yeah, uh, my PPT. Uh, yeah, my PPT. I think my PPT is there in, uh, in front of you all. Yeah. So here is a wonderful question, my dear friends, my students and teachers, expected teachers, all of you, lecturers and professors, wherever, wherever whoever 
uh, live on YouTube and then through our Cisco WebEx. Uh, see, this is the question that uh, I don't ask really much important uh, questions. I mean, I'll just always ask a tiny questions because once Albert Einstein, what he said is, if you can't explain simple, which means you don't understand well enough to respect and honor that statement. So the questions are going to be really uh, small and tiny in fact, but uh, this question can greatly help us to have wonderful thought idea about all the renewable energies and all. Okay, so it is the time for all of to uh, trying to find an answer next after five to 10 minutes, we'll be finding an answer for this as well. Okay, so uh, so the same question in a different way, Sandal, I'm asking for the uh, This is one wonderful point that you all can Google yourself. What are all the various five regions to go on solar? Another wonderful question. One can always Google it. Okay. Uh, so this is a coal mine and, you know, people go more and more deeper into the mother planet Earth and then just, just mine it and bring out lakhs of tons of coal a day to serve and uh, support the power needs of modern life of women all across the nation. Okay. So they go more and more deeper, but however, the coal is very precious. I mean, uh, millions of years it took, you know, and uh, we are simply consuming it no time. And we just brought it uh, through the various transportation, like, you know, ships and all. We import from other countries like Africa and Australia uh, every uh, day, lakhs of uh, But you see, ship after ship uh, we import and then we just transport to the thermal power plants to uh, support ourselves, uh, the energy needs of the nation. But this is the, in fact, one way kind of, uh, uh, you know, burning coal and CO2 emissions and ending up with a lot of pollutions as well. But now, uh, so how long we continue of uh, burning this CO2 emissions and causing a global warming very severe? So uh, this is going to be end in no time. Then what is that other alternative we have? That's where appropriate technologies and then alternative technologies that have to come forward and we have to all work on down, understand and update and uh, update ourselves into that area as well. See, this is the thermal power plant. I'm not against consuming the power. I always wish that we all consume more and more power because as per, per, per head capita power consumption is the index of for developing the nation, okay? But however, it's not the way that we consume the way it is happening in a thermal way consuming, okay? So when sun is there in front of all of us, we are not trying to make use of the energy given by sun god, okay? So see, see how CO2 emissions are so much massive, uh, see, but uh, the, uh, and the fossil fuel, at least from now and then, the way it went, okay, now we have to reduce it and then go for alternatives. So here is one interesting question that one can have it, fossil fuels are killing the planet, no doubt about it, okay? But uh, we can have a wonderful question added to that, how and uh, like this one another question tag you all can have and uh, see this is the one of the repercussion of uh, global warming i'm going to show you about all that in recent times we have come across you know the ambient temperatures went up and then the forest got fired in australia and lakhs of uh, the animals got fired up in that particular fire accidents and nobody could control in a time properly and people also lost their lives whatnot okay so ultimately a uh, lot many things we need to discuss about all this but in such of a world, we lost the diamond. So as uh, the reason we are taking so much of uh, social responsibility and shoulders, because as of now, though the NASA kind of uh, was most prestigious research institutions like our Israunda, but they're trying to their level best to find any other alternative. But as of now, there's no planet B and there's no plan B as well, okay? So the World Meteorology Organization is countdown started. Like uh, when is that global warming index is going to reach 1.5 degree? when the ambient temperatures are going to be more and more raised, and then how do we survive, and what are the various other side effects of all that. So that all things are already going on. So climate change is more dangerous, even the COVID-19, this is what is a message pushed by all the environmental experts and all that bees, because this particular COVID is only handling people, but however, climate change is not leaving any single living being on the mother planet including all our animals and then the, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, uh, plants and then the all, you know, uh, humans, every living being, okay? So once that is the case, then where are we going to end up? There? So how do we uh, save our God? But actually in my childhood days, we really don't have the science and technology went up so much affordable. But now these days, the solar photovoltaic modules have come down the price wise. 
uh, at uh, per peak watt and all. So people can really uh, make use of all that affordable uh, equipments available. So the, the missing part is, but however, in other countries, you see every single square meter is well utilized. So a lot of solar box there and every single home on up above there. But do you see here, uh, hardly, hardly anywhere. So, but however, uh, you see the apartment complex here in the United States, uh, I could not even see a single square feet of the place if they left it out. So, uh, even in Germany, the car parking and all, you see that uh, EV vehicles, uh, just they just park it out there while they go into the workplace and immediately the charge will take place. So that by the time evening again, they can back and again, they can go wherever they want with a full charge already provided, which is green and uh, cool as well. Okay. So a lot of people are working on all across the various countries and all that, but we need to, people are enjoying in many ways. This is Revo Power Plant, most inspiring power plant in India. Uh, it's the biggest, largest, even uh, entire for the entire Asia. Uh, I mean, recently, our beloved Prime Minister of India inaugurated here at Reva, Madhya Pradesh. Okay, this is 750 megawatt. A lot of power produced by this is going to run the Delhi Metro, okay? So this is the scenario almost 10 years ago now. Okay, but uh, today we need to get updated. That's an assignment for all my students as well. See the fossil fuel near about 80%, how it is getting consumed and renewable energy only 20%. But definitely we need to make these figures reverse. Okay, so uh, this is uh, about a power plant uh, uh, particular uh, uh, slide explanation to all of you right for this particular but session. But however, I'm going to demonstrate about this particular solar photovoltaic cells and then the modules and the energy, how we uh, capture and harvest and then make use of that with a small, uh, you know, a small home power design power plant here in front of me. But you need to have a wonderful question in front of you, how this particular basic solar cell work, okay? So uh, this is one wonderful question. You all have to have it and you all have to work on it. And uh, this is one interesting slide that you all can enjoy. Uh, because in current pandemic times, a lot of people at home, everybody, so that they are consuming a lot of electricity and their power bills went up in thousands and thousands and everybody is feeling as if the tariff is so high. No, it's not the question of tariff. The question is that we are consuming more. But however, Sun is saying that I am ready to pay your bills. Why are you paying from your pocket? But you are not, we are the ones not making use of sun energy very much easily available these days. Okay. So a lot of children ask me this question. Sir, can we run our AC on this particular solar photovoltaic? Yes, of course, because AC needs uh, electricity, but solar photovoltaic panels will directly give you the electricity output. Only the thing, little conversion, that conversion has been already taken by the mission manufacturers itself, involving some inverter kind of things and all. So no much of kick loads and all are there on this particular solar photovoltaic modules and all so that uh, interesting uh, engineering went up so we don't have to worry about all that these days like solar powered refrigerators have come solar power coolers have come solar powered whatnot everything has come like inverters and ups and everything is working on solar okay and this is one wonderful uh, good question i wanted to ask all of you that can we uh, say that uh, sun is a big battery for all of us like you know that battery like a basic fundamental cell with a lot of chemicals and in similar can we feel and justify this question that uh, sun is a big battery for the whole universe this is another question okay anyway uh, this is the kind of uh, presentation i need to work with all of you later those who are interested see but however you see the iridium solar in our uh, mother uh, nation in uh, uh, so much high almost uh, with the color uh, contrast out there it's showing near about six Kilowatt hour per meter square, just imagine, just meter square, L is equal to one meter, B is equal to one meter, that's one meter square area, just imagine small area, and the small area you get nearly six kilowatt per every single hour, just imagine the inspiring figures of this map. But why is that we are not really making use of that is another question that we all need to work on it and develop, update and upgrade all of us. And uh, similar to that, uh, see, uh, this is a basic uh, particular uh, circuit, like in electrical circuits and all, you know that basic fundamental cell and then the switch and then the bulb and all. In similar to that, here instead of the regular cell, he is a solar cell. I mean, the solar photovoltaic model I'm going to demonstrate. The moment the sun rays are falling and the photon energy of that is going to produce the required electricity and make the lamp on and all. This is what for basic understanding. Okay, but however, it's a little complex thing, but however, once you install this kind of uh, power plant at your home itself, whatever you want, you will be using it. If you are uh, producing more and more than your requirement or when you are not at their home at all, that will be uploaded to the regular local uh, lines where that net metering will help you to uh, reduce your power bills. 
sometimes you get paid by the departments as well. I mean, that is the adjustment. Okay, that's all net metering. Very interesting area. Okay, uh, so let's collaborate with nature because we are from nature. We are going back to the nature, but we are doing ignorance to the nature. That's where is the. That's where I just said that let's collaborate with nature. Okay, being part of the nature. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, in fact, here is an interesting point. Uh, almost a couple of years ago, when I met uh, Anki sir, and then uh, uh, when they are trying at IIT Bombay, uh, Energy Swaraj Foundation started. Uh, and uh, during the corona pandemic time, Sarah has uh, uh, thought of going with a certification course program uh, all about uh, this energy literacy. So he designed a program called Learn to Design Your Own Solar Home System. So I was really impressed by the program and immediately, uh, so I went through all that program and then I said I will have to connect to all my students of the nation. You know, thousands and thousands, maybe four than 50,000 children are connected to this program through me and then uh, being a uh, partner to this program and then uh, channel partners. And a uh, lot of people got certified. This is a certificate, a sample certificate, which I'm talking about. And again, today in the session, we might even request even uh, to continue this program and again and again by our selling is Okay, he's the one. Uh, so uh, uh, the, so he, I connect always children to various solar uh, activities that I'm going to demonstrate all this in front of you next after this. This is a small, tiny, uh, you know, meter, which can make you understand uh, that milliwatt per square centimeter area so that you'll understand what is the local ambient uh, solar energy available in front of you at wherever we want. And uh, Solinkis have designed uh, very, very interestingly uh, some of the you know student solar study lamps because he wanted to connect all the children at schools itself to understand the importance of going on solar. So these are the activities we learned from him and after that uh, we uh, started conducting workshops and Solanki sir, in fact, established two uh, in uh, Guinness World Records on uh, 2018, uh, October 2nd, and 2019, October 2nd, and Gaya Mahatma Gandhi Jayanti Day. Uh, but uh, 2020, we could not because of Karana thing and all. But however, I just modified that equipment so that we can do it online also. So we did it uh, like on uh, 15th of October and uh, uh, our uh, Kalam sir birthday. And then after... Uh, we also did, uh, these are the various video and the explanation of the video and every single step. But the most interesting thing, sir, prepared these videos just like for five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, all together, all the 15 videos uh, is a matter of watch time of nearly uh, three to three and a half hours. But you will get amazed knowledge of all that. And then later you can take the exam and like a quiz and I'll get certified. But here on uh, 2020, this November uh, 14, Diwali day, as you all know that, you know, the China crackers and all very dangerous uh, because of the already corona time children are not really properly getting oxygen and all. Uh, they are kept inside and a lot of activities going on. So that's where instead of, because Diwali is a festival of life, then what we felt is that let us uh, make this a Diwali because uh, our energy swaras has given a slogan, uh, Diwali high solar valley. That's where uh, uh, the solar diya uh, and all uh, are designed and sent us and then we have uh, made all these things available to all our students and all the students enjoyed celebrating the festival of light. That's where we said, oh, Diwali hai, oh, Salar Wali. Amesha ke liye, this is the Diwali that uh, Salar Wali has to go. With this, I just want to conclude this particular PPT is over now. And I'm going to show you, uh, I mean, uh, okay, uh, can you also, uh, she, hello, yeah, I can stop sharing now. Okay, fine. Uh, so, Okay, now I wanted to demonstrate few of the um, gadgets now uh, based on solar and then after uh, today's my new uh, innovation kind of. So basically my interest in uh, working with children, I wanted to make them understand what is uh, invention to what is innovation. That's more important. So invention is more important or innovation is more important. This is one particular clarity I'm working with all the students of the nation. At the same time, my primary goal is to raise the scientific uh, temperament of the student so that uh, he will opt his career in uh, pure science or the core science or basic science. Because scientists are very important. See, during all this corona time, uh, everywhere the virus has spread out, but India provided a solution for that because our committed scientists of the nation. But however, we need many, many, many. The quantity and the size has to go. That's only possible opting the career in the fundamental uh, science as well, um, uh, doing the master's PG and then doing PhD and then again opting the career as a science national labs of CSR 37 to 38 and then working with all the technologies and all. Then we can make our country more pride. I mean, intellectuals of uh, 
full of uh, you know made in india make in india skill india school india all these things can happen towards the solar india and productive india and all that so uh, in fact uh, this is the lamp i believe you can see now uh, can you uh, i request admin to make my uh, id as a, you know the spotlight so that all can see uh, because i hardly see here uh, my picture so can you make anybody can, uh, some admin can make this happen there um, i think so sir you are in the pin pin sir so okay, boy Oh yeah, because in my screen I just see in a corner a small picture, so I don't know whether uh, okay. So this is the uh, uh, solar student table lamp designed by our Salanki sir and team, and then uh, so this is the model which is uh, uh, for the panel. What we have for that is uh, this one, the 2.5 watts panel. So four pi hours of charge to this particular lamp, it can comfortably, conveniently charge. Though that uh, after uh, whenever it is fully charged, every day all my students. Uh, some of the students are uh, those who have prepared this during the pandemic time uh, they are also there in the session now just now they messaged me and they are making use of uh, these lamps every day so that uh, they wanted to become and prove all the time as solar soldiers of this nation so soldiers are not only one at the border soldiers have to be every single square meter of the nation that's where our nation can address all the issues and now my dear uh, students and uh, Uh, this is a solar torch light. You know, uh, see, whenever light rays are falling on it, and the photon energy is getting converted into a charge of it, and it, they, you can see the charge indicator, so that you can also use it as a solar torch or a solar, uh, you know, table lamp or whatever way you want. Like, okay. So another way I wanted to make sure here is a device which has got a, you know, PR sensor that it detects the movement of it. As our previous speaker has explained about the sensor, very nice. I also learned lot of things. Uh, Namaste, sir. As uh, our uh, sir has come, uh, Namaste, sir. So yeah, so uh, you can also feel uh, the way the energy is getting stored, and then whenever because this is the one which I'm using at home. So because my mother at 80 years in night time, then because she is a diabetic patient, so for you nation and all, she don't know where the switches and all. So this will immediately detect the motion and immediately give me an alarm and my light activated because the light comes. My light activated alarm will come, and then immediately I also wake up and take care of my mother so that she will be comfortable, so that she can live for more years also. So, in similar to that, um, uh, in fact, I already explained you about some solar panels, and you know, uh, students from schools they can also enjoy a lot of toys with the small, tiny uh, solar modules. Also, uh, you all need to understand that, and also, uh, in fact. Here is a tube light which I just made with LEDs. So I'm going to power up this particular tube light. Uh, you all can enjoy uh, because now this 220 volts AC. I'm not more interested uh, because uh, that's all with the thermal power and all. Okay, so we can enjoy with uh, sun. Uh, so this is all uh, solar powered equipment and all. And uh, also see, uh, in fact, uh, here we made the one particular uh, LED uh, plate like with one mm thick. You hardly see when it is just tapped exactly. You know you cannot even see as a single scale one mm thick candle. You can see, but however, if I power it up, then you just see how much power it is. My goodness, you see, you can see the brightness of it. All these LEDs. Okay, we can make all these things very interesting, and also some fancy uh, for various uh, festivals and all. Uh, uh, so we can also make this kind of uh, uh, some uh, uh, fancy things for uh, with all this. And also, uh, students, you know, uh, here is a, a particular uh, PV uh, module, and it receives the energy, and you know, it stores inside. You can use it as a solar lantern or a powerful agricultural focus light as well for the flashlight as well. So, with this, uh, I just uh, wanted to make you understand. See here, uh, uh, the panel what we provide with this particular student solar table lamp. Here are the specs. All the important specs are always there. Every single solar photovoltaic module, you will have the specs here. So, in similar to that, I just wanted to show you a model which I developed as particular uh, ch charge control unit (CCU), so that it takes care of all the battery management and the load management and all that. So, this is one point which I wanted to show you. And uh, after that, there is another CCU here in front of you. Uh, this this CCU is a little higher capacity with the uh, Uh, high amperes like uh, 20 amperes and all that so that is uh, for a home purpose and all and also uh, what i wanted to show you here left with me uh, most interestingly today our session is on science and technology together see this is what is uh, capturing the light energy the photon energy and storing inside 
and giving you the light whenever you want it. So capture and uh, reuse it again and again, small tiny things, but useful, okay? So with this, what I just wanted to conclude, see, almost five, six years ago, what happened, uh, uh, all of Chardam Yatra, you know, uh, Uttarakhand area, so a lot of flats have come. At that time, uh, you know, the charge went off, all the cell phones out of communication, out of uh, charge and all. There's no local 220 volts there. Though the 220 kilovolts is there, but 220 volts is totally failed. At that time, I got an idea that why can't, can't we do this design with solar uh, cell phone charger? So this can charge once it is just kept outside and take the energy into this box and it can charge our cell phones for near about three to four times where our pilgrims can come out of that yatra and then safeguard themselves, okay? Communication and, and help them very good way. And with this, what I just wanted to uh, show a little for further more. Yeah, uh, uh, in fact, uh, today, uh, uh, in fact, uh, here is the uh, small wind turbine mill to make you all understand uh, this is developed. So uh, this is a dynamo, what I have here. So I want to make sure all my students understand how the energy of the wind can be properly harnessed and make you because renewable energy is not only solar and we can make the hybrid things also like wind energy and solar energy all together so that during night time this kind of wind energies can also help us so i did a lot of uh, this morning three four hours i worked on all these different kind of blades and exercised and prepared this particular uh, model to make you understand what kind of blade will help what way with the same velocity of the wind and all the parameters, like the variable parameters and all the stuff like that. So that and all we can do another session because now my Guruji also has come in front of me. And uh, uh, so that what I wanted to finally end up uh, for today. Uh, most interestingly, uh, I wanted to share some books like Global Warming. We have wonderful books like this that uh, I request all my uh, lecturers and professors can go and to collect kind of this kind of wonderful books where they can help our students to prepare their interest in understanding the energy and their consumption and saving the energy, what not initially. And also, as I rightly said, the region I was well inspired by my Guruji, Sri Solanki, sir, see, uh, this is the wonderful books he wrote and then gave me a lot of knowledge, the inspiration behind all my uh, today's my activity since last couple of years, almost I am there with uh, uh, development of uh, uh, solar soldiers in the nation because of the books written by my Guruji, Sri Solanki sir. And then uh, the knowledge, what I'm trying to acquire from this day by day, every day, whenever I get from time, I read a lot of and interestingly knowing from that. His videos are itself very inspiring to me. And uh, now uh, 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 from my side, the PPT and why we need to go all solar with uh, and demonstrative stuff and all, though there are a lot of much uh, here in front of my lab and my uh, collections and whatnot, but uh, as the time has come to my Guruji, because already we are running late, so I suppose to give my Guruji at 5.30 and my train is late and all, I sent a message to uh, Guruji because Guruji's time is very important for all of us. And now I wanted to um, just... Uh, uh, introduce my Guruji from my side, from, from my side, because anyway, our head of the department, uh, Sri Ramchandra Garu might explain about my Guruji, but uh, uh, from my side, whatever I was just wanted to mention in just two minutes, if uh, our uh, Dr. Ramchandra gives me permission. Sir, can I say uh, one or two minutes about my Guruji? Can you give me permission? Sir, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so uh, in fact, uh, uh, all students, uh, I especially request all students to have a little focus about my Guruji. Uh, the reason, see, uh, though I am at 55 now, I just wanted to be a Shishya forever to him because the reason, uh, though uh, in my nation, I have not seen my father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi. But what happened? Uh, the way our uh, Swalanki sir does the activity, the way he has taken the social responsibility and the uh, soldier, not for only our mother, uh, our, in, our nation, all for the whole uh, globe itself. The, so mother planets itself, uh, because he is trying to make everybody understand the importance of going solar, uh, you know, for a massive mission uh, with Energy Swaraj Foundation. So, he is very comfortable at IIT Bombay as a professor, but even then he has taken, in spite of all his great position achieved, but he, uh, he has taken a lot of responsibility and he developed so much of content through his books and videos and the day uh, work and so many people inspired by him, thousands of uh, his students uh, are uh, following him and all that. And uh, the thing is that uh, the way he designed a solar bus, 
and inaugurated few months ago at Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh from the Chief Minister of uh, Bhopal Aza has come and witnessed that function. After that, uh, every day he is going to various places and covering all the uh, nation through his solar bus and inspiring many, many millions of people. And it's a mission he committed for next 11 long years. He wanted to do that, man. How much commitment? I have not come across anyone in the nation with such commitment. That's where I felt to myself that we all have to be a big followers and fans of him and his mission and the motion. And then ultimately, uh, we all will be solar soldiers and we will be energy soldiers. And then, because even our Prime Minister of India also said, if you wanted to be a patriot, then you don't have to do anything. Even if you save uh, one watt of a day, that is going to be a great uh, to the nation. So I request all of you to listen, uh, sirs, uh, a wonderful uh, is uh, talk for this evening on this technology day that we are really blessed that Sarah is there with us. I think uh, uh, so we will have to follow and uh, his Atra to South, I'm literally waiting to be a part of it. Actually, the moment he announced, I personally wanted and uh, uh, you know, be there with him forever. But uh, unfortunately, I have uh, only one mother with me. I had to be there with her for some time. But however, the moment our vehicle and Sarah is going to give, uh, give a plan to us, and definitely I will be there with the entire South, and I will guide my sir, and I will work with sir, and I will make the India very powerful with the sun energy and solar energy, saving the energy and uh, whatnot. I will uh, talk a lot on next uh, upcoming sessions and all. And I think uh, this is the time. Uh, I hand over to Dr. Ramchandra Garu so that uh, he will be uh, officially inviting uh, Sri Solanki sir with us. I think there is a problem. Uh, I am not able to really my so voice connection is going off, video is going off. Uh, there is some major technical problem. Sir, you are audible sir. Uh, we can hear very clearly. But uh, we don't see you. I think your camera is off or what? I don't know. Maybe bandwidth issue there or... Sir is there in the panelist only, so it won't be any problem. Actually, you must be able to get with the uh, audio and video properly. Admin need to do any settings for uh, Sir's connection? I mean, uh, settings or something? Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Sir, am I audible? Can anybody respond? Yes. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ramchandra, sir. Can you hear Okay, okay. Thank you. So, Solanki sir has is there in the meeting, but uh, you know some maybe some other problem. Okay, he will join, and uh, Sunil uh, sir is dealing with him. Meanwhile, uh, sir, I would like to say my heartfelt thanks to uh, Srinivas sir. You have uh, given a wonderful. Uh, motivation to all the uh, all my students and as well as my colleagues. Uh, you know, uh, see, teaching is easy, but teaching technology is not that much easy. 
technology comes with practice and some kind of innovation you know so that innovative ideas uh, wherever uh, whenever you have then only you are able to explain them in a beautiful way so a teacher should have an innovative idea and a practical component then only he must be called as a, a best teacher uh, yeah, you are uh, uh, you are deserve for that tag best teacher okay so you have uh, given with a span of a little time you have uh, completely explained the need of solar energy to this blue planet undoubtedly so then we are uh, on behalf of the department and uh, center for innovation incubation and entrepreneurship uh, government college autonomous rajas mandri we uh, proudly uh, have you so on this particular day uh, we are very happy for you our uh, uh, teaching and then demonstrating the uh, objects which you prepared by your own so the indigenous technology is always uh, an asset to everybody or any, uh, every institution you did it uh, wonderful and then they have given it uh, uh, a beautiful explanation for that so thank you for uh, gracing the occasion today and there might be a problem with uh, solanki sir and then uh, my sir is uh, dealing with him meanwhile uh can i introduce him once actually to the audience that uh, we can save some time srinivas sir sir actually i just want to mention about uh, i about uh, ev our ev recently what we have done so i i think i can take another 2 minutes to uh, show our children our departmental improvement and all into that uh, sir uh, sir what i sir what i taught what i what i have uh, speaking uh, are you able to understand sir yes sir, sir. yeah i have, okay then uh, so shall i introduce uh, solanki sir to the audience yeah that's better sir by that time sir will get connected to some other uh, internet connection so that you can finish off his introduction sir yes yes yeah. okay uh, that's a better okay yeah make this other time sir. yes sir suppose if he is there uh, sunil sir sunil garu sir so so did you figure out the problem what what is that so well, there is a problem with the gadget sir bandwidth gadget so what we have to do is now and uh, sir is trying to connect from the other gadget sir still the problem continues okay it's the same problem with another gadget also okay so in the meanwhile time i will organize the poll for 5 minutes sir the poll no problem, sir. no problem i can share some resources to students so that we can make use of the time yes sir uh, so meanwhile time we will organize the poll sir hello sir? shall i introduce him Oh. Yes, please. Sir, still not connected, sir. Hello. 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 Sunil ji, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, shall I introduce uh, Solanki sir? Meanwhile, sir is not connected yet, sir. We are trying, sir. So in the meanwhile time, we will organize the post webinar poll, sir. It will take five minutes. All the yes, I request all the to join uh, to participate in this poll. Yes.
లేకపోతే జస్ట్ వాయిస్ ఓవర్ అని ఇస్తారేమో ఇప్పుడు 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 కనిపిస్తుంది Sir, do you want me to take another three, four minutes so that sir will come and get back? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, better, sir. Okay. I, um, so, okay, once again, I'm back, uh, all my uh, students. And now I'm going to share a few resources. I think our uh, admin might give me again a share option to me so that I can share my screen again and show you some more interesting things. for next to 2 3 minutes still because uh, solanki sir trying to connect uh, through various his devices from his solar bus <laughs> he is not in a place where high signals are there that's where he is connecting no problem i told him 
but uh, admin can you give me uh, my share option so that uh, i can share my screen and uh, connect uh, very interesting points because when i saw my guru there in front of me then i said okay let me respect his time so but uh, as sir is getting some technical issue there so meanwhile i can uh, make use of this few minutes again uh, with all the students so that uh, we can really enjoy the technology day so technology with some problems so having a problem is not a problem my dear students having no problem is the biggest problem because we lose the opportunity to solve the problem so having this kind of problem may give us an opportunity to sort out this problem so you all have to be very powerful so uh admin requested to give me a share option so that i can immediately show some more things Sir, Dr. Ramchandra Garu asked admin to give me ah uh, yeah share option has come now feel fine okay students now we are back okay still sir uh, uh, Solanki sir comes online we can continue so I request all of you take this wonderful resources like scientificstudent.com/solarlab.html. Uh, because uh, this is a wonderful page. It's a subdomain of the main domain of scientificstudent.com. Uh, so scientificstudent.com is getting uh, more and more developed next week onwards also. And uh, at this point of time, I request all of you to read this particular E means energy and then, then all, they, all this because of our uh, uh, Solanki sir's inspiration. I have adopted all this. And uh, whenever whoever wanted to know more about Solanki sir and all, they can click this link and it will connect to the our SARS website and all that. But these are all the points uh, inspired me from my uh, doctor, uh, Professor Salanki sir. And he is the one figured out all these points, the uh, drawbacks and the side effects, I mean, the, uh, uh, the effects of uh, global warming and all. But now uh, we have a Muthi Gudupati working at NASA. He also helped us to understand because he's a research uh, senior scientist at NASA. To work with all that. So, I mean, global warming and then the water research at the ports of the earth. earth okay. Uh, now, here, this is the global warming page. Uh, so, specially adopted because this particular uh, page will help you uh, in understand. Now, earth is suffering with a fever, but who can go and inject uh, a medicine to earth? We ourselves. Okay. Doesn't allow all of us uh, raise the temperature on the earth now. So, uh, it took long hundreds of years. Uh, in, in fact, uh, from uh, minus 1.5 degree to reach uh, 0 degree or plus 0.5 degree and all. But now today, we have reached in no time, almost just two decades, we reached to plus 1 degree and all. So, if at all the same way, the way we are consuming energy in no proper uh, ways and all that, then the temperatures might even go up plus 1.5 degree the global warming index then just imagine i told you all the side repercussions of all that see that and all is well maintained and well so what is the natural greenhouse effect and all these things you can uh, so what causes global warming and all these things are well drafted here for me to understand uh to respect and honor my solar guru sri solanki sir this was the phase developed and again uh, going back to uh, the uh, the this particular you can also go through climate change this climate change is very important that we all need to know. So how do we mitigate and uh, how do we control, how do we bring back our climate uh, again back? See, the, so again, uh, you all have to uh, go through these wonderful resources available in front of you. Okay, uh, so we can be part of our Energy Swaraj Foundation activity. You can browse energyswaraj.org website. So the kind of workshop, the reason I develop because, uh, you know, the technology things and all more on hands-on. So when children are connected in three-dimensional way of learning so that uh, they can enjoy more and more, that's where uh, our workshops are all there. So uh, this connecting workshops, again, uh, uh, blessings of my Solanki sir. So we learn a lot many things and then connecting children. Even this small boy, like six years boy, the Charvik Sai Krishna from Guntur and Bangalore. So he also prepared all this technology. He is very uh, more interested in connecting every single small uh, solar module and all. Uh, to uh, every single is gadget, whatever. You don't allow anyone to use anything other than uh, solar power things and all, okay? See how children are enjoying greatly all across the nation through all the workshops and all. So we will do all this uh, making hands-on through our uh, 
search guidance and a um, lot of workshops are coming up and uh, uh, his uh, desire is to make every single home in india with solar powered home and where the solar india is possible uh, for the best productive india to mitigate the global warming and the climate change back on okay so a lot of courses are developed all these courses are listed here so you all can browse these courses and take the certification course and, and go through all that so whatever sir develop a new program i'll always list here the new programs are also there recently sir introduced me a new excellent uh, app uh, you know that keep up the app so that cap keep up app and all that we'll be uh, updating here and tomorrow okay so uh, solar equipments wonderful page uh, sir has developed so many equipments and solar products if you go to solar products and then uh, sir changed so many excellent material selected and designed and developed uh, all these things are available so that uh, we all can uh, get them uh, through our solar shop and uh, yes yeah, sir has come sir so all these things so all these things can be greatly useful now i just want to close this particular uh, our uh, this web page but however i wanted to connect you all I mean, I'm in other meeting now. Uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, Chetan sir, one one minute. I just uh, say hello to audience, and then we will uh, we will have one more session with you, and uh, we we will have you know pre uh, uh, pre conferencing. Then we'll go for the session, sir. And if you yeah, permit, how, how to say hello? Because it's within yeah, you you, you just you just say like this uh, in mobile. I will uh, connect uh, my okay. speakers. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. 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 Wait. Uh, you. You just uh, see. You are a uh, great. <laughs> Actually, then uh, yeah, we I missed you, sir. We should talk. Uh, yeah. This is important topic. Uh, uh, we should get a right perspective, but uh, uh, unfortunately, it's not connected. Yes, yes. Wait, sir. Wait, sir. I will connect. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, am I audible to you, everyone? Yes, 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 yes. sir. Yes. Um, the unfortunately, uh, what was happened, you know, uh, dear participants, uh, Solanki sir, he tried uh, in many ways, mobile and as well as the desktop, and uh, we could not catch him because of this technical problem. Uh, and he assured us, uh, you know, he wanted to take one more session, but uh, he is having. Uh, another meeting scheduled meeting is there and we, he would like to uh, say uh, thanks uh, for this session and then he wanted to give you one more session for us and uh, uh, he wanted to speak uh, over the mobile actually so uh, please sir uh, you yeah. can so hello everyone uh, uh... I'm really uh, sorry that uh, because of the technical problem, uh, I could not uh, join and talk to you. Uh, today, it's definitely a very important uh, day and uh, I wanted to share my views uh, regarding the science and technology and the manner or the direction we are going. Uh, definitely, uh, there is a lot to share and uh, it is also clear that the, the manner that we develop we have been developing science and technology and we have been using science and technology. It is not uh, going in the right direction. There are more problems in the world than it used to be there without science and technology. So I think one must understand that uh, the development of science, the manner we are doing and the use of science that we are doing. And there is a, I think, big problem in both development as well as use of science and uh, days like this, we need to think what we are looking for. Is this is this the to develop science and technology and make our life more difficult, more miserable, more uh, uh, depression, uh, more into violence? Is that what we are trying to make our future and to you know develop and create for our children? So there are major major disconnect between what we want. And what we are actually doing, and I think uh, um, today the technology day, we should think about it. That we are going wrong. Like our path in the right direction, we would be able to use and develop the science and technology in the right direction. 
so think about it you know this is a uh, food for the thought uh, it's really unfortunate that i could not appear in person and uh, uh, on video and and talk to you uh, but this is my brief message to all of you today uh, think there is something wrong and uh, it's in, in the science and technology is not taking us or we are not taking it in the right direction so thank you very much once again uh, uh, and maybe sometime uh, some different time i will talk to you in detail about it also like to tell uh, mention that uh, we are going to launch a program on monday for training regarding energy and climate we call it energy and climate keeper program uh, where every academic institution students faculty members everybody can join get a small training and become a volunteer of uh, this global uh, initiative that we have launched about energy and climate so Uh, stay tuned with our website energy swaraj.org uh, slash keep up dot uh, php and you will get the details about the program and uh, I can share on email also so that you can join and become a member of the program. So once again, thank you very much. So thank you, thank you very much, sir. You have given a lot of energy. Actually, uh, great opportunity for us to interact uh, with you. Uh, but at uh, the time, uh, that means. uh we don't uh, expect this kind of uh, you know trouble which we get uh, and then any have uh, tomorrow uh, monday onwards you are starting one training program i myself and our faculty members and our students also there and we would like to join you sir please forward your link and then uh, in the next week uh, whenever you find a free time and we will have a good uh, session one uh, nearly 40 to 50 minutes it's the duration of session we would like to have uh, have from you sir sure sir we'll definitely have it yeah, yeah thank, thank you very much. thank you thank you sir thank you everyone everyone from corona make sure that you are doing pranayam increase your lung capacity do more and more pranayam so that uh, we can all take care properly thank you sir thank you all the best thank you so this is what uh, what happens uh, uh from our end uh, really sorry for this uh a little bit uh, disappointment is there then technology uh, made like this so, so uh, it's not a problem but sir issued as he will uh, take the session one more time i will tell you only one word actually he is uh, you know uh, solar uh, gandhi actually <laughs> uh you know uh, he suppose you just uh, uh, type in website chetan singh solanki chetan singh solanki you type it and then you can get many more web pages on him so i will i would like to read out only one sentence about him so why we eagerly waiting for him and why we invited him for uh, this particular day uh you understand the the meaning of it uh, our intention also so then dr chetan singh solanki besides being a professor of the department of energy science and engineering iit mumbai is also an educator innovator uh, and researcher entrepreneur author and philosopher and known for is remarkable work in the solar energy sector so he is a man behind indian solar bus actually to prepare indian solar bus solar energy by placing the solar energy how the buses are um, he, they made a bus and he is roaming around across the um, country with his colleagues uh, um, with that bus and he his uh, member of M- mnre government of india many more uh, he uh, wonderful projects and nearly you know um, 5000 uh, above citations and then uh, 450 publications so many more things are there with him he's a great person but uh, unfortunately we uh, didn't have connect today and very sorry and then he assured me tomorrow <clears throat> uh, next week we will I put a separate session for this okay and any more questions and then we'd like to answer some of the questions and uh, by time 
uh, we are exceeding the schedule actually so our time is 4 to 6 and 4 to 6:20 is there so um, thank you uh, for all the participants and uh, any more thing would like to say anything or shall we disclose the session i thank uh, the kishor kumar sir and then you know um uh, sc srinivas sir and solanki sir uh, and our uh, principal uh, dr david kumar sir and our uh, technical advisor and the coordinator of cie of government college rajmandri sunil kumar sir and uh, isub basha sir and all my colleagues from sachcha ji sir and ramu sir and sanjeev sir and other uh, dr reddy and uh, venkana papu and all other guest faculty members who supported uh, this activity uh, from my department and uh, i am very happy actually i would like to run the one session but the time exceeds actually how best we can utilize uh, you know so uh, co2 uh, into a useful chemicals that i would like to tell you uh, actually but uh, the key sessions are there so that's why i could not accommodate myself in this particular uh, session uh, in this day but uh, anyway uh, we'll have a separate session with uh, chetan sir so thank you for all uh, being with us and supporting with us supporting us okay sir the principal sir would you like to say anything or shall we disclose sir sir am i audible sir yeah you can close hello you can close yes sir yes. so okay so th thank you thank you for everyone this uh, uh, this is the pandemic uh, situation and stay safe stay home do prana pranayama and uh, you know so th this law, uh, this month is very very tough time for all of us okay so don't go out and then stay safe stay home okay thank you thank you for giving the opportunity to meet you all thank you sir